Hi there. George R. R. Martin just made a new blog post reacting to HBO's announcement that they have officially greenlit a live-action Tales of Dunkin' Egg TV series titled Night of the Seven Kingdoms. Now, there were some questions when HBO made this announcement. Martin answered those questions in this blog post. But rather than just read off the whole thing verbatim and without comprehension, I've boiled it down into seven key points of information, seven main takeaways from this. So let me run down the list quickly. Point one, Ira Parker is in fact apparently the new showrunner, and Steve Conrad is out. Now when they first announced that we're making a pitch for a Duncan Egg show two years ago, spring of 2021, it was being helmed by Steve Conrad. Martin makes it pretty clear in this, and he doesn't use the word showrunner, but he says, Ira Parker has assembled a team of writers. And more importantly, that Ira Parker has written the script for the first episode. So, yeah, Ira Parker is the showrunner. Why did Conrad leave? That's an ongoing question. If there was a disagreement behind the scenes and how they're handling the material. Or it's also possible he never intended to stay. I mean, there was a brainstorming session for House of the Dragon where they had writers who we thought would stay, but it turns out like Claire Keeshel said, well, we never intended to stay for season one. We just came to help out for the brainstorming stuff. So I know what's going on with that. That's an ongoing question, but I think Ira Parker is a great writer. I'm actually a little more comfortable with him because he, he has writing experience on this franchise. As Martin himself notes, Ira Parker wrote the script for House of the Dragon season one, episode four, uh, King of the Narrow Sea, when Daemon comes back to court takes her near to Flea Bottom. There's a lot of intrigue in that episode, a lot of good dialogue. So he's an experienced writer. On top of that, you know, he has written for four other previous TV shows since 2015. He's been a staff writer on all those. So yet he is a career screenwriter. This isn't like, hey, let's promote up our personal assistant based on personal loyalty, like they did with Brian Cogman and then later with Dave Hill. It was cronyism that they knew if we hired a real career screenwriter, they would tell us how incompetent we are. And I'm more angry at the people who didn't call out how unusual it was that, you know, we're fans, we don't know that it is really inappropriate to promote up your personal assistant who is not a trained screenwriter, who is really just a PA, and that the only time they really started publicly getting criticism for that was when they bragged about it to a writer's conference after the final season and revealing, openly saying HBO is pressuring us to hire career screenwriters. What, you mean like the audience? That No, we're not seeing that again. That is our nightmare. Just There was a point when people just... It's, it bothers me more that we got lulled into thinking that, that if they said, oh, in 2014, we're going to make a Dunkin' Egg show. Let's put Brian Cogman in charge. He doesn't know how to run that. He really doesn't, and he's admitted he doesn't. But that that... that reality distortion field, as they call it, that it's normal to hire up personal assistants and put them in charge. I want someone who's an experienced writer on this. I don't want, like, a Lord of the Rings also did the same thing, where they hired up... They were script doctors. They weren't as inexperienced as Cogman, but it's still... These guys have no experience running a major show. And it, it wasn't an disa utter disaster to me, but it's still... Why didn't we get, like, a team of really hardcore screenwriters on this? Why does fantasy always get, oh, just hire up the, the personal assistants? No, Ira Parker is a good writer on this, uh, very experienced. We're all fine with that. That he's part of House of the Dragon. Uh, they People debating whether Martin's actually writing, writing for this. Well, he's having meetings with them. If you're like, oh, it's taking time away from other things. I don't think he's personally writing a script for it. And I wouldn't mind if he did, because it's a straight-up adaptation of a book he wrote in narrative form, just turned it into a script that really isn't that much time. But it actually doesn't look like he's writing, writing for it. I mean, he's meeting with them. Similarly, like, Ryan Condal, I don't think would write a script. He might. He really liked it. Back when they were first debating whether to make this or not, it was actually Condal who first, you know, came to Martin and said, can we do Duncan Egg? And he said, I actually already suggested it to HBO, and they rejected it. With the blog post, Martin says, Oh, production takes so much time. I first suggested Duncan Egg in 2016. Well, that's not the, the filming. It's the green light is hard. That He's talking about they rejected it at the time in 2016, tried some other ideas. That's not once we've greenlit something, how long does it take to make? That's a separate question I'll talk about later. 
but that's because they didn't want to do it at first. But moving on to point two out of seven, Martin clarified that season one is an adaptation of the first prequel novella, The Hedge Knight. He said that in as many words. There was some speculation that, well, they're novellas, they're short, that there are currently three prequel novellas in print for Duncan Egg out of a planned 12. But the first three, the first one was in 1998, the first three were later collected together as one hardcover that you can just go buy in a bookstore, titled A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. came out in 2015, and it's a relatively short book, because it's three novellas inside of it, it's like 300 pages, but we thought, well, the good early Game of Thrones seasons were one book per season of ten episodes, maybe this will be one season of stuff for four seasons or something, but he said no, one prequel novella across the entire first season. Well, how do you do that? That leads directly into point three. Martin also clarified that season one will be six episodes, not ten. Which makes more sense if you're only doing one prequel novella across six episodes. I can see that working. Well, he noted that this isn't set in stone. Not sure what that means. Maybe they maybe they get seven, five even. I'm not sure what they do, but... They're not pushing to have an artificially enforced, one-size-fits-all uh, series limit of 10 episodes. That if it's longer than 10, you have to cut it down to 10. And if it's less than 10, you have to make filler episodes. Like like anime, you, you, no, we're not going to have filler episodes like an anime thing. That, But we really see the new, new leadership at HBO is more willing to go, this is organically the amount of episodes you need to tell that story that House of the Dragon Season 2, when they said, people freaking out, oh, it's reduced to eight episodes, well, they also were planning Season 3 at the same time. It seems that they're going to have two halves of eight. And Winter is Coming Out Net came to the same conclusion as I did independently. They pointed out, when you sit down and read through the source material, there's less than ten episodes worth of stuff before that stopping point. And we're also not sure how long these episodes are going to be, that... They could be as short as 30 minutes. I mean, like, um, The Mandalorian had quite variable episodes, sometimes as little as 30 minutes, sometimes closer to a full hour. I don't think we're looking at House of the Dragon-sized episodes. It, House of the Dragon episodes were longer than Game of Thrones episodes. They averaged 63 minutes. Most were over 60 minutes. And I said, if you add up the runtime of House of the Dragon Season 1 compared to the average runtime for uh, Game of Thrones Season 6, which is their last 10-episode season... It would be 11 season 6 episodes, because they were that long. The, I, I don't know if they're going to be 30-minute episodes, but they're not going to be 60 minutes. Think more like 40 to 50 minute shorter range for 6 episodes. I think that can work. Oh, and talking about episode runtime, the nice thing uh, is, th this isn't a separate point, but thinking about episode count, Martin did confirm it was greenlit straight to series without a pilot episode. That we're not bothering with that again, which makes sense. This is already a, an in-print story. That the pilots for both Game of Thrones and Long Night, the Blood Moon prequel they tried to make, both of those were embarrassments. That, well, actually, it's a good thing they had the Long Night as a pilot because they weren't sure about it. And it was so bad, they were willing to make a $30 million loss on it rather than make that into a TV show helps that it was the show is greenlit by the old administration before AT&T took over. I think they just wanted something out and to save face than ran, basically, but it was that bad. But the, the story of the Game of Thrones pilot episode that they wasted $10 million on it because they had to refilm almost all of it. And the entire point behind a pilot is it's a sampler that you are willing to take a loss on. But HBO at the time, the old HBO under Plepler, had this idiotic mentality of we attract the A-list talent by giving them total creative freedom. So no, I will not exert any oversight over what these untested uh, uh, new showrunners with no prior television experience, what they can make. So when they saw the rough cut of the first episode, they'd never seen a frame of footage before. And they're looking at it like, you're making basic filming mistakes. There's nothing but close-ups. You don't know how camera work functions. There's all these behind-the-scenes problems we're hearing about for the first time that you mismanaged it. That Just imagine the shock of that, that they intentionally didn't exert oversight over the Game of Thrones pilot. 
and then were horrified at the results of not babysitting these guys when they should have. And again, it's the whole thing of, I'm angry at Benioff and Weiss, I'm more angry at the corrupt system that allowed them to thrive. Because then, what Benioff and Weiss, they've openly said this, we did, they didn't make an argument of we're learning, they pointed out to them, well, you've already made so many foreign pre-sales on this pilot that you will lose $10 million on the most, exp the most expensive pilot to that date if you don't order us to season one to at least make your money back. They expected season one to fail, it was just earning their money back. And then stupidly assigned their best directors to it, so it, it tricked us into thinking it was better than it was. But the entire point of a pilot is it's a maybe. It's your fault for taking on loans from foreign investors on a pilot episode to the point where it can't fail, it's too big to fail. Then it's not a pilot anymore, is it? It's, it's, their, it's their fault for borrowing money against a pilot is absurd. So we're not getting a pilot for Tales of Duncan Egg. They didn't get a pilot for House of the Dragon either. In House of the Dragon, Congle said, we expected to film a pilot. We didn't, because they were, and the official reason was they were really confident in what we were doing. They liked the work we had shown them so far. That's probably true, though it probably, they're also, you know, desperate to get something out quickly because they blew a year on the Long Night pilot up to that point. But I, I didn't think they'd need a pilot for Duncan Egg, because it's in print, it's the only prequel series that is fully narrativized like the books. Like, even House of the Dragon, it was an outline. This is, it is text, it is very easy to adapt to screen. I don't think it needed a pilot. That doesn't mean I'm against pilots in general. Some of the more, they're loosely based on things in the world book things, might need a pilot to get a feel for them, like... Uh, young Corliss Valarian's Voyages Around the World, The Sea Snake, or Nymeria and the Roinar versus the Valyrians. It's not a direct narrative. I could see them asking for a pilot for that, and I wouldn't be offended. What I would think would be ridiculous is if you ordered a pilot for a Nymeria show, and then before seeing a frame of footage, took out massive foreign loans against it. <laughs> So there's a debate about whether to have pilots or not, but this is it's such a finished novella, it's not, it doesn't really justify having a pilot, because it's already in print, you already pretty much, it's a known quantity, it's a small scale, it's also a short series, like you have a pilot for six episodes. So that's what we're looking at there. So, three points up to now are, Ira Parker is the showrunner, season one is adapting the first prequel novella, but across only six episodes, that evens out. 